When the angel visited Mary and announced the big news that she was going to be a mom and that this baby would be the Son of God and sit on King David's throne forever and ever, it was a lot to take in and process. The first being, well, how is this all going to happen since I am a virgin, she said. And this fact would remain true for Mary even after she said to the angel, let it be to me as you have said, I am the servant of the Lord. It was all so wonderful and terrifying all at the same time, and yet Mary was willing to trust in the Lord, and in His word she put her hope. And of all of the wonderful things that were said about this child, and this child she was about to bear, would also, she would also be told the child's name. You are to call him Jesus. His name would be known first to the family and then to those who would later cry out his name for help and hope in their infirmities. Jesus, have mercy on us, would be on the lips of so many. And his closest friends would call out his name in joy and, and in their confusion and even in their desperation. Why, just think of Peter sinking in the water that he just walked on, but now seeing the wind and waves began to slip down into its depths. Jesus, save me! But his name would also cause many to fear and cry out. Think of the demon-possessed man who interrupted, interrupted the church service and, and declared that, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. His enemies would use his name with contempt. And finally, before his death, Peter would deny that he even knew the name of Jesus. St. Paul would write that a day is coming when every knee will bow and every mouth confess that Jesus is Lord some in great joy and others in terror. Paul would also remind us that there is no other name under heaven by which we may be saved. In the name of Jesus is how we begin worship. In the name of Jesus is how your life with God began in the waters of your baptism. We begin our prayers in Jesus' name. We end them in His name. We bear His name. We are Christians, Christians. This is how you and I understand the name of Jesus. And that's why I was so shocked and saddened when I heard the story that I heard this past week about the name of Jesus and its use. This story isn't from the internet, it's not from Facebook, but from one of our families in the ministries that we have to children. The story is of a mom who scolded or warned her child about the name of Jesus because, in her opinion, it was a curse word or a cussing word. I was dumbfounded when I heard this, but I get it. Yes, many people use the name of Jesus as a cuss word. It is as common as any other curse words that you wouldn't want your child saying in public or at home. Imagine that if your only reference for the name of Jesus was a cuss word. How did we get to this point? And more importantly, where do we go from here? Well, rather than wringing our hands and uh, sighing deeply, I would rather have you see this as our challenge in ministry and the joy set before us as we get to teach children and their parents that the name of Jesus is actually a blessed name, not a curse. We get to teach about the one who so loves us that he would even allow his name to be misused so that some might use it in worship to praise, to pray and give thanks. We spend our hours and hours with children at our Open Arms Child Development Center, at our Tyler Preschool and our Sunday schools and our youth, groom, youth groups, and, and there we share the name of Jesus and all of His goodness, His care, His love for us. We share the truth about Jesus in our Sunday morning Bible classes for kids and in our, our Wednesday evening Common Ground Bible studies. And, and in all that we do in worship, all in service, that our homes 
might be a place where the name of Jesus would be said often and lovingly in prayer and praise of the one who was born in Bethlehem, who lived and died for us and rose again. Every knee will bow one day, and our prayer as a congregation is that those knees would bow in humble adoration of our Savior, friend, and Redeemer. Well, this weekend is a great time to invite friends to join you in worship. The Tyler Campus Choir will be leading worship at 8.30 and 11 with our choral services. You won't want to miss that. Our full set of Sunday morning Bible classes will be offered on both campuses for kids and adults. And our Wednesday evening Advent services will start at 6 p.m. Hope to see you all there.